Um, we're not discussing the breath, but we just watched the uh, OCD video with Hank. So <clears throat> within a week, he, uh, I guess he had a gun. He took the gun, drove back to Western, and just shot up the people. This guy had no history of violence. He was not psychotic. He was just depressed, and he was on medication. And he did this bizarre behavior. And there's a couple of other examples that hit the news because people, it was so out of character for them to do something like that. <clears throat> so now if you take any of those medications, whoever's prescribing the medicine will tell you, thank you not to get off. If you feel like you don't need it anymore, that's great. Or start lowering your dose, ease you out of it, and then you'll be on it forever. Okay. So, <clears throat> why we're on this? Let me ask some people who are depressed, especially people that are really depressed like this, actually take their own lives. They think about taking their lives, probably everyone thinks about taking their lives, but only certain ones do. And that is a product of your individuality. So on this depressive scale that starts here and ends there, where do you think on this scale a person is most likely to take their own life? Where do you think? Here? This way? All the way up here, halfway up, not halfway up. Why would you say that? Huh? Because uh, it is very important to get started. You are absolutely correct. What he's saying is, you're down here and you're depressed, and you say, I should kill myself. Ah, I don't want, maybe tomorrow, not today. I'm not getting out of bed. And then you're down here and you're worse. Yeah, I should kill myself. But I ain't doing anything. You know, it's, it's a task to get me home the bathroom, right? And so then you get your intervention and then you get your help and you start feeling better. When you start feeling better, then you're not in bed. You're out moving. Maybe you're out looking for a job. Maybe you got a job. Maybe you went back to your old job. So things are looking good. Things are looking good. Now, I will tell you this at the risk of somebody getting mad. If somebody is giving you or somebody you know antidepressant medication, they are really not practicing the best practices if they don't arrange for you to be in therapy. Because medication is great for a, medic for a problem like this. Medication is wonderful. Like I said, it's one of the few illnesses we sort of say we treat we've uh, found a treatment and uh, successfully to get rid of it. But once you're up and around and you're feeling good, you're seeing the light, then what happens? You get a setback, right? You're looking at somebody thinking, oh, I might, this girl seems a little interested in me or this guy seems a little interested in me. And then you get shot out of the saddle and boom, you're back to being pressed. But now you're different. Now you say, I've been here, I've been there, I've been here, and then this happens, and I'm gonna go back? Oh, hell no, I'm not going back. And they take their life. Because they didn't know how bad it was when they were going down. But now they've been through it, and they don't wanna go through it again. And they thought they were getting better, and got slapped down, so now I have the energy to do it. So this is what they do. But that's, that's another question. Okay. <clears throat> what else are they gonna mention? Okay, and you mentioned about two perspectives, the learning perspective and the biological perspective. Fortunately, we're well ahead of pain. We got the biopsychosocial, so we know how that works. People, who are depressed may have been predisposed 
to succumb to a deep clinical depression. Genetically, people who suffer from depression very often have somebody in their family, not too far distant, parents, uncle, somebody that has suffered from that type of illness as well. <clears throat> the biological, oh, okay. The learning perspective is it's an adaptive behavior. And this is hard because if your mom was depressed, and this is what she did when she, when she had stress and she had anxiety, then you learn that from her or you learn it from somebody else. Those learning associations, okay? And then there's the biological side, which could be genetic, and it could be uh, just a, a physiological predisposed position that you that you have that you may or may not become depressed. It's like schizophrenia. Schizophrenia is like 87% genetically related. So if a person suffers from schizophrenia, very likely somebody in their family has. But of course that leaves 13% of people who have a didn't have any family contribution. And it also means that when you have identical twins and one gets schizophrenia, what percentage of chance does the other twin have in getting schizophrenia? 50%, right? And you would say, no, 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 it's gotta be up there in the 80s. No, it's not. So, it obviously is a combination of genetic predisposition, your psychological side, and your social side. It's a combination of all three of those interacting. Now, we understand what reinforcement is because we study behavioral modification, right? Oh, if you step on a crack, you're going to break your mom's back. We had all these little magical thinking that we that we said. We even do it as adults. You say you're talking to somebody, somebody you're interested in. You see this in the movies all the time. This is a real favorite one. They're talking and oh, okay, nice to meet you. And you're like, and the guy stands there and goes, if she turns around, then she's a keeper. So they walk around, turn around and look. Ah, yeah, I got it. No. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, so we we do practice this kind of magical thing, and uh, children do it, and we do it as adults. All right, well, let's get to the real deal here. And see what. Uh, Guys, have more computer skills than me. I'm looking for that little folder so I can go into my USB so I can show you the next video. And it's not even down there. There it is. Where's the chat?
Christian restaurant, and everything I do is dictated by the One, two, three, four, 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 one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, that's the thinking part. I plug it in. If I don't have a bad thought, then things will go fine. If I do have a bad thought, then I got to stick it in again. That's obsessive thinking. Because looking up is good. <laughs> you do it again. If I don't do rituals, I feel that bad things will happen. And so the way to prevent the doom or the bad thing, I do the rituals. And this is where it becomes behaviorally reinforced. I think I'm a guitar player, I play in the band, and if I don't put all the things on my desk, oriented in a special way. I've got my inhalers here. I've got my guitar picks here. And if I don't do that, if I deviate from that, then something's going to happen bad to me and the band. So today, I'm going to make sure all my stuff on my desk is right. And then tonight, we have a gig. We go, nothing happens. And I come home and I say, see, I did it. I avoided problems by arranging all this stuff on my desk. That's how the reinforcement comes. And if something does bad happen, then I didn't do enough of it. I did the right things, but not enough of it to stop the bad thing from happening. So now I gotta do it even more. Northwest, good, very good. Southeast, good, very good. Southwest, really bad. Keys are going that way. The keyboard usually will get skewed. If I put my phone here, it has to be. The inhalers have to be. The mouse has to be facing the northwest, especially the pick, the guitar pick. Otherwise, something bad uh, to man will happen. Logically, I know that it's a superstition and that the universe doesn't work that way. But on the other side, the OCD brain comes in and says, oh, no, no, this is real. We got to do this. And it's so compelling, you have to do it. And I think I have a lot to offer here with this stuff. There's nothing. It's completely stupid. It's wiping of his hands. That's a compulsive behavior. Wipe off the bad juju. Bad spirits. Go away. It's completely stupid. <laughs> Can't stop it. I to be pretty It doesn't stop. It's not my fault. What? Something can go wrong. One, two. No, it's three, longer than two minutes. Four, four, I got four, one, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. About that is my best. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one. I think you can get it out of your, uh, out of your previous file. I don't think it would be the right one, but obviously.
So listen to him narrate what's going on. He's completely cognitively aware that what he does is absolutely stupid and it doesn't really change his life. But yet he does this anyway because he is compelled to do it. And that's where the truth comes in. Six minutes, well, that's better than two. One, two, three. Okay, I'm almost shot. My biggest. It's not the right one. But it's right. Yes, I'm passing these cars and looking at them like a normal car. I'm almost shot. My biggest fear has to do with an El Camino. When I see that's an El Camino. Or here in order, I have to wipe off the El Camino's bad luck. The longest period of time I've spent wiping off the bad luck was close to 10 hours. Chess is the biggest one that's going to have. He's too resilient for himself to care for him. Notice the EX is going to do over it. I think kind of cute, kind of a loss. He can't seem to control it. Um, how he got that, that feeling about the El Camino, well, this is when you know who your friends are and who your friends are. He and a friend are walking down the street and an El Camino drives by. So his friend who knows he's OCD tells him, oh, can you work that up? It's an El Camino, man, it's man, it's man. Just that suggestion. And now he's looking. It's totally to me, it's how you can't do it alone. With your exposures, you're going to feel those symptoms go up and peak. And now, now he's got a therapist. And what is she doing? She's practicing desensitization. The same thing that Watson would have done with little Albert. By the way, remember the video we saw of the uh, spider and the guy getting over his fear of the spider? Did I show that in there? No? That was when we were talking about memory. And he, he received a uh, propanol pill and then he didn't have the fear of spiders anymore. You guys don't remember that? Maybe I didn't get this. Anyway, the point is, it doesn't help because you haven't seen it, but the anxiety that you feel, the sweaty palm, the dry mouth, the heart beating, the head pounding, whatever it is, you know that you're suffering an anxiety attack at some level. So what she's doing is telling him they've already trained this, how not to get all jacked up. So she tells him, breathe slowly. You know, if you've got your little junior mints here that make you feel good, pop one of those in your mouth and, and think about, you know, you on a beautiful beach or whatever. All that, that mind inflicting uh, therapy on him. And then she starts off at a low level of what the big threat is, which is the El Camino. And then builds him up to it. There's a lot of these videos on YouTube. There's one guy who's afraid of, apparently a lot of people are afraid of going on elevators, either because they're claustrophobic or summer. They don't like elevators. Am I taking this whole thing 